Hello friends, Billy here. I have finally gotten around to making this full length fire mage guide with a focus on Mythic Plus, doing dungeons and doing the most damage you can in them, and being useful to your group. I made a short one back in beta, but since then a lot of hotfixes, changes, nerfs, and buffs have happened. I felt it's appropriate to make a better and longer one, so let's get started here. So for talents in Mythic Plus, you're pretty much going to be using these talents all the time with no debate, and I'll explain why for each talent. Searing Touch, this is by far the best talent, as there's going to be a many scenarios where you will find a mob that is below 30% HP. Using this talent to its fullest potential is going to give you the most crits, to give you the most flame strikes, and the most pyroblasts. Now the next one is Shimmer. This one is the best because it lets you blink while casting abilities, allowing you to not have to cancel a cast or move when a mechanic comes for you. This talent is a DPS increase specifically for that reason. Rune of Power is really good for Fire Mage's damage profile. You know, the way that they do damage, it's based around cooldowns. So taking Rune of Power to buff that cooldown is going to give you the most value. For Flame On, this talent is just too good. We have been taking this talent since the beginning of Legion. Every patch, every raid, this talent gives you the most Fire Blasts, that allows the most casts and combustion. It shines on single target, and it shines on AoE, so there's no question here. This tier right here is purely decision. If I was raiding, I'd take Frenetic Speed, but if I was doing Mythic Plus, I would use Ring of Frost purely to have it for Emergency. Flame Patch. With the changes to Ignite no longer spreading naturally, and Ignite being a lot weaker than it was in BFA, Flame Strikers are our most efficient way to hit 2 plus targets outside of Combustion. So spamming all those Flame Strikes while dropping all of these Flame Patches, it's great synergy, it's just the most damage. And last we have Kindling, which was recently buffed from 1 second cooldown reduction to 1.5 second cooldown reduction. This talent was strong at the end of BFA, and it's strong now. With the addition of Shifting Power from Night Fae, which I'll get into, playing for a short Combust build in the Mythic Plus is the highest damage. For our Covenant, we're going to be picking Night Fae. The single target is nearly the strongest, and is by far the strongest multi-target Covenant for Fire Mage. In Mythic Plus, you want to have good single target and great AoE. That is the key, and Night Fae fits this. The best Mythic Plus Soulbind is Dreamweaver, and what Dreamweaver gives is a cheat death. It's funny because Fire already has a Cauterize as a cheat death, so this makes Fire very tanky. In the Field of Blossoms, which gives you haste when you're shifting power, haste is a super stat for fire and AoE, so this can increase your overall damage the most. For single target, the best soulbind is Karain, because his main trait is a 10% damage increase above 75% HP targets. Generally, bosses live longer than trash, so this has more uptime on single target. Popping your cooldowns with this 10% damage increase is great single target. Now unfortunately with our Renown being this low, we do not have access to every trait. So Naya is a great alternative because her main stat gives us Mastery. And Mastery is not a bad stat at all, so early on we will use Naya. For our Conduits, we will have the option of picking two Potency Conduits. Infernal Cascade is always picked as it is proven to be the strongest. And then our second Potency Conduit will pick between Flamestark damage or Pyroblast damage. In Mythic Plus, Flamestrike is your highest damaging spell overall. So you will pick Master Flame. If you want a more single target or you're in a raid, you would take Control Destruction for the Pyroblast damage. Fire has a couple good legendaries, and I'm going to go over primarily ones that you would take in Mythic Plus, and those are Firestorm or Fevered Incantation. Recently, Firestorm was nerfed to no longer have increased procs because of haste, so it was slightly nerfed. This is putting Fevered Incantation ahead in AoE Sims, and just even the slightest of slight behind Firestorm and single target Sims. Fevered Incantation has less variance than Firestorm, so I believe you will end up taking Fevered Incantation. However, both of these legendaries are completely viable in Mythic Plus. Temporal Warp is a bit unrealistic at times to get the most value out of in a Mythic Plus dungeon. For your stats, it's always usually ever-changing, depending on your current character and even your race. So I'd always suggest simming yourself. When you sim for Mythic Plus, turn off Bloodlust. It's usually the best option because you don't have many pulls that you would Bloodlust. Verse, Haste, and Mastery are all good stats for fire, but at the beginning of expansions, item level and main stat are king, so I suggest simming your individual pieces at raidbots.com. Now for simming for Mythic Plus, this is completely my preference, but I always sim one target, two minutes, and I make sure I turn off Bloodlust. If I'm simming for AoE, I sim five targets. If you want to, you can sim more, maybe ten targets. And I make sure to do one minute, and I always make sure Bloodlust is off. 
When it comes to enchants, Shadowlands has added some new ones. We still have our ring enchants, so when it comes to that, you will most likely pick between haste or verse, depending on your character. For your weapon, we will pick Celestial Guidance. Sinful Revelation is good single target enchant, but in Mythic Plus, Celestial Guidance is useful in all targets. New cloak enchants have also been added, giving you stamina and picking between tertiary stats like Avoidance, Leech, and Speed. Only Avoidance and Leech are useful for Mythic Plus, so between these two I'd pick Leech. Unless you feel you need help surviving one-shots, Avoidance wouldn't really help. A simple stat gist enchant has also been added, and we'll take this one and it is the highest stats, and also a simple intellect enchant on the bracers have been added. This is a list of the best consumables to use. Spectral Flask of Power for our flask. Feast of Gluttonous Hedonism, which is going to give us that main stat. Can use Haze for his food as an alternative. The new Augment Rune is called Veiled Augment Rune. It's probably very expensive, and the old one still works, so you can use either of these but only one type. Two new consumable buffs that we have received are Armor Kits, which is a stamina buff to the chest, and Shadow Core Oil, a minor weapon enchant separate from actual enchants. The oil enhances the new single target potion, Phantom Fire, and on AoE combustions we will use the Intellect Potion for max flame strike damage. The new healing potion is called Spiritual Healing Potion. These potions are on a 5 minute cooldown, so use them wisely. My rule is unless there is some sort of specific damage check, like a boss fight, then just hit it on cooldown on boss fights and AoE combustions. The only profession that really matters in Mythic Plus is Engineering, and that is because it brings these two special items to your arsenal. A battle res item for when all hell breaks loose and you can save your group, and the belt enchant dimensional shifter, which is on its own separate cooldown from normal potions, and puts you invisible. These two items can be very useful for Mythic Plus, I don't believe there is any real benefit to being a tailor anymore, but I will still remain a tailor and an engineer on my main. The biggest changes to Fire Mage in Shadowlands is that Rune of Power now has a 1 charge and lasts 2 more seconds, and is now automatically dropped when a mage presses their major cooldown, Combustion, Icy Veins, or Arcane Power. And the second major change is that Ignite no longer spreads passively, and is only spreadable by Phoenix Flames, which is now baseline with 3 charges and no longer a guaranteed critical strike. So let's get started on the basics of the rotation. Fire Mage is a spec that has revolved around Hot Streak, the core mechanic of their rotation, which is getting 2 crits of any of the abilities Pyroblast, Fireblast, Fireball, Scorch, and Phoenix Flames all in a row. These 5 abilities all count towards the 2 crits. Getting these 2 crits in a row gives you the Hot Streak buff, which lets you use Pyroblast or Flame Strike as an instant cast ability, because without Hot Streaks, these spells need to be hard cast. Flame Strike however, does not count towards the two crits of hot streak. So for flame strike spamming, you'll need to use more of these crit resources to get them out because pyroblast works with hot streak and flame strike does not. Pyroblast is our main single target damage and flame strike is our main AoE damage. So when you use combustion, fire mage's main cooldown, it turns everything into a critical strike, which means all five of these spells will be 100% crit and 100% guarantee heating up and hot streaks. Phoenix Flames and Fireblast have 3 charges, so using these spells in Combustion is a priority over Scorch and Fireball. Remember, Pyroblast crits give you a heating up, so during Combustion after a Pyro, you only use one spell crit between the Pyro, because you do not want to waste the crits. When you Flame Strike and Combust, you have to use 2 spell crits for each Flame Strike. Fireblast is the most important spell because it is always a critical strike 100% of the time, and usable while casting. If you have any available Fireblast charges and you are casting a spell with a heating up currently, whether it's Scorch or Fireball, using Fireblast will complete your Hot Streak mid-cast and let you use Pyroblast at the end of that same cast. Fireblast being usable while casting is such an amazing thing. These are some quick examples of using Fireblast mid-cast to get a Hot Streak. One of the main goals of Fire is to always fulfill every heating up and to not waste a single crit. Fireblast helps fill this. Blizzard has in-game indicators for heating up and for Hot Streak. The smaller fiery lines in the middle of my screen are indicating heating up, showing me that I have 1 crit, and the bigger fiery lines show that I have hot streak, and if I send that power less and it crits, then I'm back to heating up. A question I get a lot on stream is when to use scorch and when to use fireball. Well both of them are spammable casts used to generate heating ups. Most of the time you'll be using fireball. You will only use scorch on mainly these three conditions. Movement, because scorch is movable or castable while moving. During combustion, if no fire blasts or no phoenix lands are left, never ever fireball in the middle or end of combustion, or when a mob is below 30% for the talent searing touch. Another question is how many targets should I be flame striking on? The answer is two targets you will hard cast flame strikes. I'll get into it later in the video. 
and on three targets in combustion you will flame strike. So this means two targets in combustion you are pyroblasting. So right here I'm going to present you with a very beginner and simple way to do a single target combustion. If you are just learning fire you might have some trouble doing the opener I explain next. And if you are learning fire the main thing you want to learn is how to alternate abilities like pyroblast, fireblast, phoenix flames, pyroblast, fireblast, pyroblast, etc. So to start off, this goes for all scenarios. You want to have at least 2.5 fire blast charges and two phoenix flames charges going into combust. The beginner opener goes like this: scorch, and you combust at the end so that it creates fire blast pyro, fire blast pyro, phoenix flames pyro, fire blast pyro, phoenix flames pyro, fire blast pyro, and then a phoenix flames pyro to end it off. I have my cast timeline week order at the top, so you can replay and inspect the globals if you want to. But notice how I chain fire blast pyro and phoenix flames pyro. This is the most important concept to learn as a beginner. For the more complex single target opener which seems to be more damage, it is pre-casting fireball or scorch if you want, and combusting first then double fire blasting mid cast. What that's going to do is put you at two stacks of infernal cascade which is our, our overpowered conduit instantly. And you will send off that pyro blast with that first fireball so that they both crit and you'll get another pyro blast back. At that point, it's phoenix flames pyro, fire blast pyro, phoenix flames pyro, and etc all to the end. Once again, inspect my cast timeline or weak aura up top. For outside of Kulans, your main goal is to just fireball till you have a heating up. Fulfill that heating up with the fire blast to get a hot streak and send off the pyro blast. Rinse and repeat. Remember to follow the scorch versus fireball tips I explained earlier. Also remember to keep abilities like fire blast, phoenix flames, and rune of power on cooldown. If you get bad crits with your fireball and you're about to cap fire blast charges, just use two. Be aggressive, sitting on your abilities will result in less casts. And now we have everyone's favorite, the AoE Combustion. This has the flashing numbers that you see, especially when you use Shifting Power in Combustion, which is only good on AoE to use. Sometimes you won't always have Shifting Power though. I'll explain after this. So to do the AoE Combustion, you'll start off with a precast Scorch, combust the end of it, Fire Blast Flame Strike, Phoenix Flames Fire Blast Flame Strike, and after the second Flame Strike you will channel Shifting Power. While channeling, you will find some time within the channel to use two Fire Blasts. When it's over, you will Flame Strike, and do one more sequence of Phoenix Flames Fire Blast Flame Strike. If you had more haste like Bloodlust or Power Infusion, you could probably fit in more spells, but if you don't, Dragon's Breath is a very much worth it. There are times when you won't have Shifting Power, but you still have to AoE Combust. It would look something like this. You would open the same as the last opener, but instead of Shifting Power, you would use a Phoenix Flames and a Fire Blast, and then you will cast Scorch and be spamming Flame Strike. This will give you a heating up because the Scorch hits after the Flame Strike. And after that, you will just spam all your Phoenix Flames and all your Fire Blasts till the end, just generating Flame strikes making sure you don't munch any crits. You can refresh Infernal Cascade at the end of your combustion for a lingering buff to Flame Patch. Outside of combustion, on AoE, your goal is to just be hard casting Flame Strike on 2 plus targets, using Fire Blast or Hot Streaks in between. Remember when I said earlier, use your Fire Blast, Phoenix Flames, and Rune of Powers all on cooldown. For shifting power, the main use of the ability on single target is to use it in the rune after combustion. On AoE, you use it in combustion if it's up. And then there's some rare occasions that you will use it for cooldown reduction on AoE, primarily if using shifting power is the difference of you combusting a pack or not. If the CDR did not matter, then you prefer to hold it for combustion. An easy example is say you start a trash pack with 15 or 20 seconds on combust, you would use shifting power ASAP to rush your combust back. One thing I want to talk about is the importance of using Mirror's Image. If you are ever combusting an AoE pack and Mirror's Image is up, you 100% should use it to prevent ripping aggro from your tank. If it is up and you do not use it and you pull aggro, you have made a mistake. You want to be protected from aggro so you can go as crazy as possible when you combust. Two more notable spells for fire in Mythic Plus is Alter Time and Dragon's Breath. Alter Time is something you kind of want to use for every single Prideful, and then Dragon's Breath is your only Disrupt. That concludes mostly everything I can think about. If I left out anything, feel free to ask me on Discord DMs. I reply to everything. Or better yet, on my stream at twitch.tv slash asuna underscore cutie. If you like the guy, send a like and subscribe for more future mage content. Plan to do one for other specs and potentially a guide for gearing for fire for Mythic Plus. Till next time friends, have a good day.